Hello, Lazio all over the world. Welcome to another episode of Lazio Lounge. Unfortunately, we have to talk deeply about Lazio Bayern Munich. A huge defeat for Lazio. Um, there were high hopes before the match because Bayern Munich was coming from a not a great streak. They lost in the in the Bundesliga last weekend. They draw the week before, so there was a little bit of confidence. Confidence that for me dropped when I saw Alasdair doing the video before the starting of the match. There's where I recognized that we had no chances. And then Alasdair, is it true? Musacchio in the press conference said, someone this, from the press box distracted me in the first half. That's why I made the mistake. <laughs> what were you doing, Alasdair? Fake hey, news. Well, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe I was the only person shouting, don't pass it back. I don't, <laughs> maybe I was the only one. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. I mean, I, I, I tried to keep it quiet from you for as long as possible, the fact that I was going to the game because I knew you wouldn't, you wouldn't be happy about it. And uh, lo and behold, it, it didn't go all that well. But let's be honest, Bayern were on another level. They, they, they outclassed Lazio. They, they didn't even need to, I feel, go into top gear to win that game comfortably. Um, at times, it was brilliant. And watching it live, it's some of the most impressive attacking football I've, I've seen from a, from a team. But, uh, but really, the talking points for us, I'd say, are more about Lazio's deficiencies being exposed and the errors um, plaguing the team. Because... If we're looking at this from a Lazio standpoint, there's quite a lot of for us to be frustrated about, regardless of, of how good Bayern were. Yes, definitely. We helped them too much. Too many mistakes we made uh, in that match. And we said it. If Lazio want to have a chance, they have to play the perfect game. And not only they didn't play the perfect game, but they made too many mistakes because... The first goal was a terrible mistake of, Mustak, of Musacchio. The third one, I don't know what Patrick was doing. The fourth one, it's an incredible own goal of Acerbi. I mean, three out of four goals pretty much is a, is a gift from, from Lazio. So, yes, Bayern showed the talent, but Lazio definitely helped them a lot. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly what Inzaghi went for after the game. And we, is, the entire back three that we lined up with um, were responsible for a goal each. Um, and I don't know if that's really ever happened before. It's quite, quite impressive in a way, if there's a kind of like statistical landmark that Lazio managed to set last night. But um, yeah, it, like you say, it, it was a night when, and we said this beforehand, if Lazio were going to get get anything from this game, what they had to do was, you know, eradicate the two biggest issues that they faced recently, which was individual mistakes that cost them and not taking their chances. And we've seen those two mis those two problems come up time and again in, in Serie A recently, even through the good run of form. But that's the difference. That's the difference in the level. You can get away with that in Serie A, you cannot get away with that in the Champions League against a team like Bayern Munich, best team in the world, who, let's not forget, have hammered Barcelona 8-2, Atletico Madrid 4-0, um, Tottenham 5, what was it, 5-2. You know, they, they have beaten some of the biggest teams in the world over the last year by bigger scorelines than they beat last year last night. So we're not going to get away with making mistakes like that. Um, talking about mistakes, one of our patrons, Davide Kochu, asked us, I fear that those individual errors will cost us the top four in the, in the Serie A. Uh, do you think this is the case, Alistair? I, well, I mean, it could do. It, it, it could, because... The, the problem is that the two things aren't are the, the two separate things of the defensive errors leading to goals and Lazio not taking their chances. When those two things combine, it loses you a game. Um, and we saw both last night. Look, Lazio ended that game with more attempts on goal than than Bayern had, um, not on target, but more attempts during the game. And 
they, they had enough chances. If you watch the highlights, the amount of times they got in behind the Bayern defence, which was, you know, that was that was the tactic, obviously, the strategy, and it kind of worked. It just, but they just never took any of the opportunities that they got. They never really tested Manuel Neuer apart from Correa's one chance. But Lazzari did some brilliant work in the transition. Um, but you know, if you've got a player passing it back to the best striker in the world. You just can't do it. If you've got Patrick running into Lucas Leva and then kind of doing some weird Superman dive to lose the ball on the halfway line, if you've got a Cherby not looking at a cross and kicking it into his own net. I mean, I thought that the team looks more nervous than usual last night. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's already a team that struggles with these individual errors, but they look like a team that lacked experience at that level to me. Um, Musacchio didn't pass it to Ciro Mobile, but to Lewandowski. <laughs> you said Sorry. the best striker Apology. in the world. Come on. <sighs> yes, too many mistakes, too many stupid mistakes. And I think we have to admit that Bayer had six players missing. But the two missing for Lazio made a bigger difference than the six from Bayern because Bayern had a better squad, had better option. While especially in defense, Lazio proved to don't have that many options, that many good options. On Musacchio, honestly, I think we need time because this was the only the second match he started on the left and. In the last year or so with AC Milan, he pretty much didn't play a single match. So I think it was tough to him for him to start against such a good team. He, we need time to see if this is the Musacchio or he will improve. Unfortunately, with Patrick, I mean, we had plenty of examples. Uh, I remember the penalty against Juventus at the last second, uh, against Pal. So many mistakes through the years. Uh, we know that Izzaghi loves him. But I think we can say that he has proved time and time that he's not a Champions League level player. Yeah, and well, I mean, at, at this level, you know, you're competing against the very best, you know, a team that's just been named world champions. So how many of these players can really say that they are at that level is another thing. I mean, Inzaghi said after the match that this experience will be good for the growth of the team. I hope he's right about that. Um, but it didn't look good for them last night. They looked demoralized. Uh, when that fourth goal came in, you know, they came back out after half time and, and immediately went and attacked and tried to kind of, I guess, set off on the front foot. But as soon as Bayern countered and there was that not just the fourth goal, but an own goal. They they were all just standing there with their kind of heads bowed, hands on the hips, looking a mixture of angry and embarrassed. And I, I think we should say their response after that point was good. In general, Lazio had a good second half. They actually played pretty well in that second half and it was an even game for most of it. But... Yeah, it's just no one's going to remember that aspect of the game, and, and rightly so, because if you're going to throw away stupid goals, that's what people will remember it for. And it's really exposed the squad depth. It's, it's exposed the, the lack of uh, proper squad planning last summer, things that we've talked about for months and months and months that you can get away with in Serie A, but you're not going to get away with when it comes to this. One thing that a lot of people here in Italy were talking about, and I want to know if you agree with them. Is Bayer playing another level? Is it playing faster than Italian football? That's why Lazio struggled. Because one thing that we, that we said is Lazio struggled to play as the usual. Uh, Luis Alberto, Milinko Savic, Leva made, made a lot of mistakes, as well as Pepe Reina. Was it because Bayern Munich was run much faster than Juventus, Milan, Inter, the teams Lazio played against? Or do you think it was just overwhelming to play uh, at that stage for some players? 
I, I honestly think it was both. I think it, it it looked like Bayern were playing at a completely different tempo last night. You know, the, the speed of their transition and the accuracy of it, and that was the difference. Lazio and Bayern both had those moments where they attacked into space, where they had space to counter into, where their forward, forward players were throwing themselves at the opposition defence. But the way the accuracy uh, combined with the speed that Bayern went at was completely different from, from how Lazio were, were um, pulling it off, as well as the defence and transition was, was much slower. I think that that is definitely an issue because we've not just seen it with Lazio, we've seen it with Italian teams in the Champions League for years now. I mean, you know, Juventus got to the final in 2017, but beyond that, in the last uh, five or six years, there's the, you know, Italian teams are not getting anywhere in the Champions League. Inter went out in the groups this year, uh, Lazio have, have got through the, the group, but then this happens. You know, the only team who seemed to be capable, really, of, of competing at this pace and ferocity is Atalanta, because that is kind of the, the kind of game that they play. Even Juventus, who try and play a more patient, measured, tactical match in the typical Italian way, are getting found out against a team like Porto. You know, they were absolutely dreadful last week. And it's not like Porto are playing at a really high level in Portugal week in, week out, but they, they, they seem to know how to get the measure of, of, of opposition teams. So I, I just feel like, yeah, you, the, the big teams in Serie A probably do get more time on the ball against the lower table teams week in, week out. And, and yes, I mean, I think last year were just dizzy yesterday from, from the pressure being put on them. Be very careful when you talk about Porto. Be very careful or our friendship could die immediately. Remember who's the manager? Mi yeah. amico Goncesao. <laughs> I, I didn't say anything. I, I said something good about yeah, Porto. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Be careful. What yeah, I, yeah, they... I loved him. <laughs> it was at Lazio. I loved him. And obviously, after he beat Roma a couple of years ago, I mean, yeah. things only get better. Um, the funny thing, let's go a little bit to the positive things because otherwise, I mean, our listener will start crying. Um, the big surprise for me was that. How, may, how often our listeners uh, were reaching out to say, ah, Lazzari is not that good, Marusic, he's terrible, etc. Who were the best two players yesterday for Lazio? Lazzari and Marusic. I think, I mean, what was it? Lazzari in the first half dro drove crazy uh, yeah. Davis. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's, yeah. he was unbelievable, really unbelievable. Uh, completely changed... Uh, the level, the confidence Lazar is having this year. And what about Marzic? I mean, I thought at a certain point, Inzaghi would have put him in goal because he started left, then uh, central defender, then again right, left again. And I said, well, look, let's start putting in goal and see if things get better. Uh, what a performance from Alan Marzic and Manuel Lazzari. I don't know if some of our listeners now are what, what they're saying because... They cannot complain about these two players. Definitely not. Yeah, I mean, Lazzari has really stepped up. Um, you know, I think recently, since the turn of the year, he's been very good anyway. But last night, he was one of the only players who really seemed to kind of step up to the occasion. And yeah, it takes serious jets to, to outpace Alfonso Davies. I mean, that was the thing he became renowned for last season, really, was his pace. And Lazzari, yeah, I mean, some of the... His energy is, is insane, honestly. Some of the running he was doing late into that game, I, I couldn't believe it, the kind of sprints down the touchline. But he was, you know, he's one of the only players in that Lazio team who has the pace to really keep up with that that kind of game. Um, even a player like Luis Alberto or Sergei Milinkovic Savage, uh, you know, Milinkovic Savage covers an awful lot of ground and, and he's quicker than he looks, but it, it's that kind of ferocity of match. Um, he can sometimes get a little bit lost in, I think. Um, but Adam Marisic, yeah, I mean, as, as, as I tweeted last night that, you know, if you told me a couple of years ago that last year would be in a knockout game in the Champions League, I, I might have believed you. But if you told me that we'd be in a knockout game in the Champions League with a back three of Marisic, Patrick and uh, Acerbi, I definitely wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. And he played uh, well there too. I know, well... The whole thing was crazy. The, the fact that Mizaki was taken off after half an hour, 
when we had, and then the fact that instead of bringing on Wesley Hoot, an actual centre back, we moved Marisic there, who I don't think has ever played there before. And uh, and then the third part of the craziness was that yeah, he did a pretty good job. He was probably the best centre back the lads you had last night. So it was funny because I think we talked about it a couple of months ago because I told you that uh, last year channel asked to Inzaghi, can Marosic play in that position? And Inzaghi yeah. said, no, definitely no. And he said he played and he played well. Uh, talked about this. I have to tell you that I was surprised to see Musacchio coming off so early. And watching from the TV, you could see that Hurt was warming up. So I thought, well, he's taking off. Musacchio Hurt is coming in. Instead, at the last second, he opted to put in Lulic, who didn't play well. He's not ready. But, yeah, I was, I was surprised because you have Hurt. Yes, you have to move Acerbi, but Hurt is a central defender while uh, Marzic is not. So I was surprised to see it. Yeah, I mean, I was particularly surprised just because we were already so short staffed there. So, you know, it's it's a risky move as well. It's not just a kind of, uh, it's quite a harsh move on Mizakio, but it's one that puts you at risk. If one of those defenders then goes down injured, you're really left with very limited options. Um, but yeah, I thought it might have been just to protect him. You know, after mistake, making a mistake like that, uh, he, he, Inzaghi clearly felt that his head was gone or that he just wasn't kind of mentally uh, kind of ready to, to take on the rest of that match. Um, which you, you can understand. I mean, it's ultra cautious, but Inzaghi is ultra cautious when it comes to these things, uh, like yellow cards as well. But um, I guess he doesn't know Mizakio that well either yet. You know, let's not forget this guy has only been at Lazio for a few weeks. He's only played, what, three games before last night. And Inzaghi might have just thought, you know what, I didn't know he was capable of that and I don't know what else he's capable of. So he's coming off the pitch for somebody who I, who I know exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, it was strange because at that point he could bring in his friend, Parolo, instead of uh, Lou. So, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it was a strange decision. It was a strange decision. Um, apart from that, we have to say that one of the failure of last night was our key players didn't play as expected. I'm talking about Luis Alberto, Ciro Mobile, Minico Isavic. I thought Minico Isavic played well in the first half, but pretty much disappeared in the second half. Uh, and I, I, I always believe that big matches are terrible mistakes all by big players and uh, Lazio didn't didn't have big players showing up yesterday and made terrible mistakes yeah um, no you're right I thought Chiro especially was was really quiet um, didn't didn't step up in the way that it needed into um, likewise Alberto I think just kind of yeah kind of disappeared from the game really it's, it's the same kind of thing. I think they just needed to be quicker. They need to think quicker. They need to move quicker. And it's, you know, to going back to that point about Serie A versus Champions League, I think, you know, Alberto in particular, a player like that, is used to receiving the ball, getting on the half turn, looking up and seeing what his options are. In the Champions League, that decision has to be made in a split second. If you're going to get in behind that Bayern defence, if you're going to trick them, if you're going to move them out of position, you need to be doing that move instantly. Um, and if you're playing Sampdoria, you probably take two, three touches, consider your options, pass the ball around a bit. And look, whilst we're guilty of doing that anyway, we've talked about this in the Sampdoria game and however many games we've had recently. Um, so, yeah, I think, again, it, it came down to the same thing. We needed... Lazio at both ends of the pitch to be perfect last night. It wasn't just the defence that got things wrong. Correa's goal was very nice, but in attack, Lazio were wasteful. You know, they, they had opportunities. They got themselves into good positions and they didn't take take advantage of the positions that they found themselves in. Although they should have had a penalty. There is that. Oh, the referee yesterday was awful. The referee yesterday was unbelievable. That penalty is simply unacceptable. Uh, would, have, would it change the game 
maybe because we were just one nil down. So even though I was a little bit concerned because Neuer is very good in stopping penalties, so you never know. But, you know, it's a huge penalty. And the ref, especially in the first half, too many yellow cards to Lazio play and nothing to Bayern's playing. I thought he was awful, really embarrassing. And the problem is he's considering considered one of the rising stars of the referee in Europe. I mean, imagine the others if he's the best. Well, someone's clearly been reading the latest issue of Referees Monthly. I'm quite impressed <laughs> with uh, <laughs> good knowledge. Um, no, I mean, I, I, from, from, you know, it was one of those ones where when you see it live in full speed, it was it looked so obvious. It looked like an absolute stone waller because Boateng steps in front of him and then there's kind of two players getting in his way to stop him from getting through to the ball and uh, he doesn't change his direction seemingly to, you know, to throw himself into a player or anything. As soon as it happened, the referee made a gesture like that, like he jumped into the tackle. Um, yeah, it, it, it seemed like a stone waller. And look, the, the point about whether it changed the game, it's... It would have, it, of course it would have. It, I'm not. I don't mean that Lazio would have gone on to win the match if they'd been given that penalty or even if they'd scored that penalty. But it came at an absolutely crucial point because a big issue with Lazio last night was the way that their confidence fell off a cliff during that first half. That the timing of that penalty decision was crucial because Lazio had just given away a terrible goal, the the goal we all feared, the the back pass, and to actually then be able to take that penalty and equalise would have, um, you know, really restored a bit of belief and a bit of confidence that they otherwise completely lacked. Because it wasn't long after that penalty decision that Bayern got their second. I, I still think the Lazio would have lost the game, but uh, I, I do think that the timing of it, um, it would have made an impact. Yeah, and thanks God it was offside because what did Patrick miss after oh. that? I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I mean, the goalkeeper was there. I mean, how? at least you had to hit the post. I mean, thanks God it was offside because oh. of that. Yeah, I mean, that, that moment has been lost in it with everything else going on. So I'm glad you've remembered it. But yeah, uh, yeah. it was amazing because the, the kind of reaction in the press box everyone was so outraged by the penalty that nobody had realized that the ball was still there and then there was this kind of noise where everyone suddenly like went oh! uh, they realized that patrick was through on goal and then there's a complete other noise two seconds later once he misses everyone's like kind of complete yeah, <laughs> disbelief yeah. that he's missed it thanks but, god he was uh, offside because oh, I... yeah. he will uh, have been relieved by that definitely 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 but yeah uh, the, the ref was terrible, but as we said, we cannot blame him for, for this defeat. Um, you, Inzaghi said they will learn from that. Do you think Iglitare has to learn from, from this defeat more than the players? Iglitare has to realize that this squad is not ready for the Champions League? Or the players like Luis Alberto, Minko Savic, etc. have to step up and see, hey... I think I'm good, but probably I'm not that good as I as I thought. No, I mean, I, I think those players have the capability. They are good players. I mean, I, I think they need to believe that they're good players to, to get the best out of them as well. But, um, but yeah, they, it's it's a it's a tough balance because you don't want them to be overconfident, especially against a team of that level. And that's what I meant at the very start when I said. I think the Lazio's lack of experience was exposed a bit because it's very easy to watch these games as a player probably on on TV and think, yeah, I could I could play there, I could make an impact in that game and so on. And then to actually be there and be in the, in the midst of it trying to influence a match like that and, and seeing how difficult it is is another thing. And so many of these players just haven't had the experience of, of playing, you know, in these kind of matches before. And, you know, let's not forget not just against a Bayern Munich team in a knockout game, but against a Bayern Munich team that's now gone 18 games unbeaten in the Champions League and they've won 17 of those. I mean, this is a team that conquers everybody. It's not just Lazio who, who lose to Bayern. It's not just Lazio who get hammered by Bayern. They are an absolute machine of a team. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, the Iguitari point is good though because that that Thanks. seems to be something that a lot of people are asking us about on on Twitter. Um, should say we're not we're not calling out all the individual questions tonight because there are too many, but we're trying to get through most of the talking points that people want. And yeah, Vittoria, I mean, I guess that that's one of them. Is is Iguitari responsible for this in a way? Like the, the team planning from last summer, how much responsibility should should he shoulder? Well, the thing is, uh, all the new signing of this summer were on the bench. No one started in what we can say was the most important, the most difficult match of the season. Murici, Fares, Pereira, Hurt. The only one starting was Reina. That's the only one. And the reason why he was starting is because Stragosha wasn't fit. So... This tells you that probably the last two summer transfers weren't perfect. And we need to improve, right? Especially in defense, we need to improve, definitely. I think that's a very generous review of the situation, <laughs> <laughs> saying that it, it wasn't perfect. Um, yeah, I mean... Uh, it, it's it's a difficult one. You can see why people are frustrated about it because it's not just a case of Lazio having, you know, been cheap or tried to be clever with deals or um, Lotito not wanting to spend money. It's that when they did spend money, they spent it on Marici, who a is a striker, which wasn't necessarily a priority position. And B, it has done very little to justify how much money was spent on him, especially in Lotito terms, which was ma made him the second <coughs> second biggest signing ever under Lotito. So, I mean, you know, when we talked about the transfer market last summer, though, I, at the end of last season, I remember saying, we don't need one centre-back this summer, we need two, like, starting centre-backs uh, to play in the Champions League. Um, I'm not happy to be proved right about that because it's been a complete disaster. But if you just bring in Wesley Hood and that's your defensive signing for a Champions League season when you've already got a problematic defence with injuries um, and ageing players, I do think you've only got yourselves to blame. It is, a, it is bad planning, whether he, whether he likes it or not. It's, it's not been a well-planned transfer window if, if that's... Central defense ends up looking like that. Yeah, and let's not forget that of the last year's summer transfer, the only one who is still in the squad, not playing, who is still in the squad is Lazzari. Johnny's out, Vavro is out, Adekany is out. They're all out, which yeah. is embar embarrassing. Right? Dermisi, Berisha, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> there's been a lot, a lot more misses than hits in in recent years. From Tari, I don't think that's necessarily the reason to say that we should be getting rid of him. But I do think that there's a case to be made that when he has money to spend, he doesn't spend it very well. Um, and when it comes to bargains, that's when he's he's a lot stronger. Um, so you know, looking at the money that's been spent on yeah, Barisha, Domisi, Favreau, um, uh, Marici. It's, that's a lot of money in last year terms, and none of those players yet, at least, have, have done anything for the club. But but the, the defensive one is the one that, that's that's the biggest mistake for me because it it's one thing saying signing a player, say Faris or Escalante or Mauricio or whoever, and they're not performing, you know, maybe as well as you want. That's one thing, but at least you've you've signed those players to cover those positions. It's that there was just there weren't enough options in that defence. The fact that we didn't have Luis Felipe or Stefan Radu available last night, can't have, no one can claim that's a big surprise. I mean, I know Zaghi mentioned it after the match, saying we, we were affected by these absences, but both of those players are injury prone. We know that. You know, that's something you have to prepare for. That's the point. <laughs> that's, that's the whole point of building a squad, to prepare for that. And those are predictable problems. They're predictable problems that those two guys aren't available and we're left with Marosic of sense that. Yeah, Luis Felipe is a great defender, but how many matches did he miss in the last couple of years? I mean, that tells you a lot. And as a sport director, you should be prepared 
and uh, find a replacement, which didn't happen. So this sum, I think, is very important. So I think this match was key to show Tare where he has to work, but also the players, because um, I didn't like Leva's performance. I thought Luis Alberto didn't play well. I tweeted yesterday, and not a lot of people agree with me, but I thought that after yesterday's match, the value of Milinko Isavic has gone down because he failed in the World Cup. And this was probably his biggest match after the World Cup. And as I said, he played well. Well, well, he played decent the first half, but pretty much didn't do nothing in the second half. So, you know, that's where big teams uh, are watching. And, you know, if you if you impress them in that occasion, then they will be able to spend big money on you. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's, it's probably a, a blessing in disguise if Milinkovic doesn't have one of the best games of his career in, a, in the Champions League knockout stages. At least it reduces the possibility of, of Bayern then trying to sign him um, in the summer. But, yeah, I mean, he's a good example of one of those players who's, who's not actually played at this, this standard, this level um, before. So... It's new for him. Uh, I, I do think he's an absolutely brilliant footballer and he's more than capable of performing at this level. But, uh, you know, first time isn't going to be easy. Um, he did OK. I don't think uh, he, he deserves an, an awful lot of criticism from last night. I think last we were just outclassed. You know, I think Bayern from, you know, 1 to 11 have the better team. Um, you know, but you, you already mentioned they had, what, six Six players injured, was it? And they've still put out that starting eleven. It, it looks like there's no issues with that squad. I mean, it's a very strong team. Um, Before we wrap it up, if Inzaghi would have been the manager of Bayern Munich, do you think that that 17 years old player would have played? No. <laughs> ne, right? Ne parole instead. <laughs> Parolen would have played instead of. I don't know. You wonder what poor Raul Moro was sitting uh, sitting at home thinking when he sees a 17 year old scoring against Lazio. Um, and Pedro Neto gave an interview last week to the Athletic uh, in which he basically said yep. Simone Inzaghi's attitude was one where he wasn't willing to give him opportunities, and it was kind of his mentality. Um, which was interesting. Previously, Neto, when he's spoken about it, has been quite positive, and he and he was on the whole in that he said it. You know, this, that experience helped him get where he is. But and he, he said he, he, he didn't mention Faris, but I think he was referring to Fari and said that he helped him in a lot improving shooting and uh, and mm. uh, and uh, finding position. I don't remember what he said exactly, but so it was wasn't all negative. But as we expected. He told that Inzaghi doesn't trust youngster, so this is a huge problem. Yeah, and it's the easiest, it's, you know, it's one of the easiest ways to automatically, you know, when we're talking about these squad problems and the transfer window issues and so on, and one of the easiest ways to just to um, to kind of cope with that is to kind of regenerate your own squad by getting these youth players in, by giving them chances, by seeing who's up to it and who isn't, and it's just not been happening. Um, no. So we, we'll never know. But yeah, it's a funny point. Last question from me. What, what can, what's, what's the point of the second leg now? What, what can we hope for from the second leg? What's, 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 what well, should we be looking for? Well, that's, that's a big question because you could think, OK, I, I play all, the, all the, the subs, maybe some youngsters, etc. But then there's the risk that you lose 9-1, right? So you cannot... <laughs> it's it's over, but you cannot lose badly. So you have to play and maybe show that the first leg everything went wrong. That last is not that level. It's much better. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think they've got a point to prove. Um, the problem is that no, no, you know, a lot of neutrals last night will have tuned in to watch that game, being curious to see what Lazio could do, maybe having heard about them. And, and they've done well in Serie A, Bayern out of form. A lot of those people would have stopped watching at half-time and flipped over to the Atletico Chelsea game, I think. And mm -hmm. how many of those people are going to watch the second leg? You yep. know, if, if, I, if I'm a neutral and there's a, I don't know, Borussia Mönchengladbach 
City, for example. If that first leg ends 4-1 to City, I'm not watching that second leg. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the problem. I mean, they, I think you're right. I think they have to restore a bit of pride. They have to go there and show that they're better than, than what they've demonstrated last night. Um, last night, to be honest, it got to the point after Cherby's own goal when I thought best case scenario here is just not getting beat 7-1 like Roma did. We need to keep it below the Roma the Roma yeah. line and we're okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That was what I was thinking. Uh, again, Alistair, thank you very much. Thanks to all our Patreon, David in particular, but remember guys, if you love the podcast, you can support us on Patreon dot com slash Lazio Lounge. You can find our podcast everywhere. iTunes, Spotify, Amazon and on YouTube as well. So thank you everybody for your support and we'll be back after Bologna Lazio. Lazio Bologna. Bologna Lazio. Yeah. Bologna Lazio. Good night everybody. Take care. <laughs>